Makers, it's Jess from Scripting Green. It's been a little bit since I showed you how I cut thick wood using my Eon Mira 9 CO2 100 watt laser machine. Recently I shared a video showing how I cut one inch thick wood and I wanted to readdress that because there are some pros and cons to being able to do that. First, my material, I did choose maple. I chose maple because it naturally gives off some red tones to it, especially when it's oiled. And because I am cutting some crabs, I wanted that tone to pull through. I also chose maple because it is a harder wood and it would be more durable outdoors than other woods like pine. Why am I pointing that out? Because hardwood is more consistent inside than it would be if I would cut ply. The glue thickness and variance in between all the different ply can greatly factor into the cut accuracy of a laser. I also get a lot of questions about settings that I use for MDF. And quite honestly, I don't use MDF that often. I'm not very skilled with it. I um, don't know too much about it and I just always enjoyed natural woods. So I can't really answer those questions, but there are some amazing makers who use it and uh, do some incredible shaping and stuff with MDF and I would check them out and ask them. So just to walk you through exactly what I did to cut through this wood, I'm gonna show you as well. Let me flip the camera around. The whole process is to turn on my external fan. I am going to turn on my laser machine and then I have my external air compressor that I'm going to flip on. It's going to get really loud, so I'll wait. And I usually, for hardwood, would set it a little more between 35 and 40 PSI. That allows the air to really put pressure onto the fire and give it that extra oomph. For demonstration purposes, I'm actually just going to cut a line straight across so that I can put a platform underneath my fiber laser um, so the wire doesn't get too bent from the weight. Over in Lightburn, I drew a line. I'm gonna change that to be nine and maybe three eighths. And then I am going to change my settings here. It obviously needs to change from fill to line. And this is the second thing that I'm gonna point attention to. I'm gonna change my speed to about five and my max power, I think I did 93 or 94, so I'll just do 93, maximum and minimum power. Everything else is good to go. And then I'm gonna send that over to my, oh, I gotta plug it in first, but I gotta send it over to my laser. Here's the other thing. I don't always cut through half or one inch wood because of the amount of power it takes from the laser tube. When you operate your laser tube constantly, about 75 or 80% or higher, it can shorten the life expectancy of the laser tube. So Ian probably wouldn't recommend doing it all the time. But I was in a bind here, so I decided to give it a shot and kind of push the limits to see where we were at. And my laser tube is three years old, so I kind of wanted to see how it was aging too. I am going to open the front pass-through slot and then lower my laser bed a little bit more send the gantry all the way to the back and load the wood. Here also is where it can get a little bit risky because instead of finding the focus point, I'm actually going to raise my laser bed up just so it raises that auto focus pin that is right here. Now, a couple of warnings here. You want to make sure that your laser bed is level and that your wood is also as flat as it can possibly be. Otherwise, you might need to run it through a planer or um, find a different piece of wood to use if it's curved or bowed at all. It will get stuck and you don't want to do that. But raising the laser bed up this close changes the focal point of the laser beam to go deeper into the wood, which allows me to cut that deep. Next, what I do, rather than frame the job that I sent over, I am actually just going to push it over slowly with the arrow to make sure that it does not touch the wood. And if I'm good to go, I'll make sure I set the origin and then I'll frame it just to double check it's exactly where I want it to be. From here, I'm going to close the lid and start. to do one-handed so I just moved the um, gantry away from my cut area 
and I didn't move the line quite over far enough on the end, but you can see where my file was, it completely cut right through this one inch piece of wood. One other thing that I wanted to point out is that I am indeed using the stock lens that came with my Eon Mira 9. I did purchase the upgraded four inch lens, but I really haven't had time to play with it other than doing some deeper bowl cuts rather than thicker woods. And just like that, I have a platform for my fiber laser cut with my OG CO2 laser. Let me know what questions you got. Beaver, beaver, beaver.